This idea that animal fats are going to kill us came from this idea that animal fats cause heart disease. And this, emer this idea emerged in the 1950s as the diet heart hypothesis, which says that saturated fat in the diet, which is found especially in animal fats, but also in tropical oils like coconut oil, increases cholesterol levels in the blood, and that this causes heart disease. While polyunsaturated fats, which are found especially rich in vegetable oils, are, have the opposite effect. They lower blood cholesterol and then they prevent heart disease. Now I think if the scientific establishment had taken the approach of Weston Price in trying to unravel the riddle of heart disease in order to generate hypotheses of the likely causes of heart disease, I really doubt they ever would have come up with this hypothesis in the first place. Because if we look at the diets of traditional populations who are free of heart disease, we find widely varying diets, but we find that many of them are very high in saturated fat and very low in polyunsaturated fat, which is abbreviated here on this screen as PUFA, and throughout this presentation I'll be using the abbreviation PUFA to refer to polyunsaturated fatty acids, again the fatty acids that are especially rich in vegetable oils. Now if we look for example at these three diets, of Pacific Island groups who have been shown to be free of heart disease, we see that there's widely varying carbohydrate content, widely varying fat content, but there are some similarities because all of these diets are composed primarily of fish, coconut, starchy tubers, and fruit, but in varying proportions so that we get these varying intakes of fat, varying intakes of saturated fat. But if we look at them, we see that on the one extreme, we have the island of Tokelau, where the diet is over half uh, of the calories from fat. And since it's mostly coming from coconut, which is mostly saturated fat, about half the calories come from saturated fat. That's an incredible amount of saturated fat. And by contrast, only 2% of calories come from PUFAs, and these are coming mostly from the fish rather than from vegetable oils. We see the opposite extreme on Catava, shown at the bottom of this slide. And here we have a very low-fat diet, uh, almost 70% carbohydrate, almost 20% fat. But even on this extremely low-fat diet, the diet is actually really high in saturated fat. 17% of calories are coming from saturated fat, which is 50% more calories from saturated fat than Americans are eating today because most of that fat is saturated because it's coming from coconut. And only 2% of calories are coming from PUFAs in all of these groups, which is less than a third of the PUFAs that Americans are consuming today. And then on the island of Puka Puka in the upper left, we see an intermediate between all these. Now we could look at another group uh, the Maasai, a cattle herding tribe in Kenya and Tanzania, who have also been shown to be free of heart disease, but have a very different diet. This time the fat is coming from meat and dairy, so it's animal fat rather than coconut. But again, it's mostly saturated fat. And the Maasai diet is cyclical and largely dependent on rainfall. And you can see in this graph that the rainfall is plotted uh, during each month across the year. And you can see that it peaks in the spring and that there's a very dry season for five months during the summer and another dry season during, uh, for about two months, a more moderate dry season during the winter. And during the wet season, the diet can be almost all milk. And during this time, it can be about 40% of calories from saturated fat. During the dry seasons, they eat more plants and they eat more meat. Uh, but even still, because they're eating either meat or milk throughout the year, all around the diet is very high in animal fat. Uh, most of that fat is saturated, some monounsaturated from the meat, and it's always pretty low in polyunsaturated fatty acids. Now, none of this evidence proves that these diets prevent heart disease. It could be entirely possible that these groups are free of heart disease for entirely different reasons and their diet is neutral. It could even be that these diets do cause heart disease, but they are so protected from other lifestyle and environmental factors that they still don't have heart disease because of all those other reasons. Those could be possible. But you would think if we were to take this uh, big picture approach as a starting point to try to make a good guess about what does cause heart disease, the last idea we would come up with is that the very diet associated with freedom from heart disease in these groups, that is a diet high in saturated fat and low in PUFAs, would be the very diet that causes heart disease in our modern population. It just isn't the first idea you would think you would come up with. But 
when the scientific establishment uh, tried to solve this riddle, they didn't take this approach, and it was indeed the first idea they came up with. I'm sure many of you have seen these uh, two charts before. I'm sure at least many of you have heard of Ansel Keys. Can I get a show of hands who's heard of Ansel Keys? All right. Not, not a lot of people like Ansel Keys in this crowd. Uh, well, you can see on the left, Ansel Keys had plotted the fat uh, intake in the national diet uh, from six different countries along a line where he plotted it against the in, uh, incidence of coronary heart disease. And you can see that there was this very clean uh, relationship where the higher the fat content of the diet, the more heart disease. You can see on the right a little bit more honest graph with all of the data that was available at the time. Uh, the line is still there, the relationship is still there, but it's much less cleaner than he had suggested. It's the, the data is uh, bound around that line much less tightly than he had suggested. But the relationship is there. Uh, but the, the, the biggest point to take away here is not whether the relationship is there or not, but it's that correlation what? That correlation doesn't prove causation, right? So this is interesting, but it's interesting in, in the sense of curiosity more than anything else. Uh, there was another key piece of evidence to support the diet hy heart hypothesis in the 1950s, and this was that you could modulate someone's cholesterol levels by changing the type of fat in the diet. And this was shown in very tightly controlled laboratory experiments where, uh, with filled milkshakes, where they take the fat out of the milkshake and then they add in a fat of their own choosing. And they could add in uh, vegetable oils rich in PUFAs, like safflower oil or corn oil, and these would lower blood cholesterol level. Or they could add in uh, animal fats or tropical oils, like butter, lard, or coconut oil rich in saturated fats, and they, these would increase the blood cholesterol levels. And uh, if you follow the idea that blood cholesterol has a uh, statistical association with heart disease, you could say, ah, blood cholesterol is a surrogate marker for heart disease. So here we have a good foundation for the idea that animal fats cause heart disease and PUFAs protect against heart disease. In 1957, the American Heart Association was not buying this. They said, whoa, hold your horses, folks. You can't argue with a surrogate marker like this with these statistical associations. If you want to argue that animal fats cause heart disease, you need to do a, sh a study showing that if you change the amount of animal fat in the diet, you can change a clinical endpoint like heart disease or stroke. These are the things that are interesting. These are the kinds of studies that we're going to do. In 1961, the American Heart Association totally changed its tune and it said for the first time that if you want to protect yourself from heart disease, if you're in a high risk group, you need to start taking out animal fats from your diet and replacing them with vegetable oils. Now what happened? Had the state of the evidence changed? No. Had those studies been done? No. What happened was a few people left the committee, a few people joined the committee, and one of those was, anyone want to take a guess? Ansel Keys. Ansel Keys, right. And so when the report came out in 1961, they took the same evidence and they said the opposite thing, and then they started advocating this restriction of animal fat in the diet. But the media didn't run with this, not right away. People just weren't totally convinced until 1984. Read some significant significance into the date if you'd like. But 1984 was when the results of the coronary primary prevention trial were published. And we could criticize this study if we had some time. But the real key takeaway point was that it did show that uh, people who were given the cholesterol-lowering drug cholesterol had a lower incidence of heart disease than people who were given a placebo.